So last time we heard about uh, gop bath, saki bath, and manjari bath. Quotes about that theme, and it made it very clear what is the difference. And we ended up, of course, with manjari or kinkari bath. So. Today, I'm, I'm just going on, because there are many, many quotes here in Vilap Kusumanjali from Chaitanya Charitamrita. So I'm just going on, um, find the next one. But I try to put them together also a little bit to make uh, an overview where they lead to, actually. So now the question could be, how can we get into that seva? How we could go into Manjari Bhava and how we could serve Swamini, Swamini's lotus feet. So the next verse is giving a hint. So the next quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita I found is in verse number 19 of Sri Sri Vilab, Kusumanjali. I will read the verse number 19 to get the connection. O Bhavini, beautiful or emotional girl, when can I delightedly Bring clay mixed with camphor along with scented water into your room. Wash your lotus-like feet with a stream of this water in a place suitable for washing your lotus feet and dry them with my hair. So this is the verse and the notes of Srila Anandadas. Babaji are right going into it. The service of Sri Radharani is not like the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So let me read this again. The service of Sri Radharani is not like the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is the service of ecstatic love personified. It is the service of ecstatic love personified. In his Brahma Bocha Maranda Stavaraj, Sri Raghunadas has written, Mahabhavuchvalla Chintarat Not Bhavitta Vikraham. Her form is born from the glistening thought gem of Mahabhav. Her form is born from the glistening thought gem of Mahabhav. And this thought gem we will remind because it will come about thoughts and gem, there will be more. Mahabhava Chintamani Dhatara Swarup Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Here is the quote. Mahabhava Chintamani Radhara Swarup. So the question is here, where are the insignificant living entities? And where is that Mahabhava?
Ladini rasara angsatara brema nama, ananda chinmaya rasa premara akyana. Bremara parama sara mahabhava jani, se mahabhava ruparata takurani. Again a quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. The essential portion of the Lord's pleasure potency is named Brahma, love of God. And that Brahma is known to consist of blissful transcendental flavors. The quint essence of Brahma is Mahabhava. And the personification of that Mahabhav is the goddess Radha. Therefore, for engaging in the service of Sri Radha, one must adopt a favorable mood. So now we have heard in this verse that the service of that Mahabhav, that goddess Radha, is not like the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the question would arise was, what is it then? In the next quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita, we will hear some hint. Raganuga Bhakti is a mental religion. Ragasya Manudharmadvat. So Raga Nuga Bhakti is a mental religion. Suniti Titi, sister, maybe you want to share something on this. Radhe Radhe. What is mental? Hey, Radhe Gauravani, I, I want to listen from you because we were just listening this verse on Saturday in our Russian Zoom. We we're reading this. So, then so I like to... I like, no, 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 it's all uh, my, uh, you know, it's, I need more higher perspectives from your heart. <laughs> I don't have any high perspectives. I'm low. Yes, so, I mean, you can please. look higher than me. <laughs> you can feel more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost now without the help of my sister. So Raga Nuga Bhakti is a mental religion. So Gurudev, often he likes this statement, I know, mental religion. He was often quoting this. And actually, this is the, the way of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, actually, mental, mentally going in seva. Like we hear from Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali and Radharasa Sudhanidi. So we can see that they are actually done some special sevas. And the next quote actually is describing this also. It's in verse number 20 of Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali. And this is actually now not the next quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, but it's the description of that mental religion. So Sri Raghunath had a vision of his service. He has a vision 
of washing Srimati's lotus feet. And in this verse, he sees himself or herself rinsing Srimati's mouth, brushing her teeth with a twig, taking her into another room and massaging her with fragrant oil there. How intense is this devotional yearning and how vivid and genuine are his spiritual visions. When the Sadaka has such a vision, he feels as if the beloved deity takes him by the hand. The more purified the heart is, the more vivid these transcendental experiences are. By the mercy of Sri Gaurasundara, all these beautiful things have been revealed by the Acharyas. So we can see that usually when someone is serving a deity, he has some plate, he has different ingredients, he's bringing them in circles like uh, incense, fire, water, flour, and, you know, all these items. Usually it's a kind of seva like this, but what would you do with a twig of neem wood? You will go to Swamini and clean her teeth with the twig of neem wood, for example. But this is just a difference we can see from the outside. The biggest difference is we serve love personified. And whatever seva is needed, it's very practical, we render. It's a very practical seva and it's first done in the mind. A mental religion. By mentally going into the seva, Visions will come. I'm sorry, I can only talk theoretically. I'm not on that platform. So, but maybe there is someone here who can give us some sharing on this. I see Mungia Mandia. I see my brother sitting there. Upinat. Maybe Gurudev is also there. I cannot see him now. Jai Gurudev.
so we heard that the maidservant is washing the lotus feet, brushing the teeth of Swamini with a twig, seat her in the bathroom, and having anointed her with fragrant oils, massaging her there. And the point was that this way we are reading of Raganuga Bhakti is a mental religion. So we wanted to ask you, Gurudev, if you maybe can share something on this topic, because from my side it's just theory. Gurudev, can you hear us? But we cannot hear you now. Yeah. yeah, now we can hear you. So, Gurudev, could you kindly share something with us on this topic? Or explaining very nice. Please explain. But I can only speak theoretically, I have no experience in that. Then, and is the right way of going, is good to do. That will develop realization. Please do that. So, the perfect mental service is actually described further in verse number 20 of Vilap Kusumanjali and of course there is another quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita in this connection. So first comes a quote of Brahma Bhakti Chandrika by Narottam Das Thakur, and this is underlined by the quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita Machalila 19. I will follow in their footsteps, I will follow in their footsteps and render loving devotional service simply on their hints. I will understand what is my duty. I will always be passionately absorbed in Radha and Krishna's forms and qualities while I reside amongst the Sakis. By simply continuing to meditate on these things, the revelations will come. Again, by simply continuing to meditate on these things, the revelations will come. I find this is very helpful, this statement. Bhavite, bhavite, Krishna Spuraye Antare, Krishna Kripaya Akyapaya, Rasa Sindhu Pare. Chaitanya Chart Amitamatya Lila 19235. Through constant meditation, Krishna will appear in the heart, and by Krishna's grace, an ignorant soul will cross over the ocean of rasa.
So this is the quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Through constant meditation, Krishna will appear in the heart and by his grace, an ignorant soul will cross over the ocean of rasa. So what to speak of Swamini? And a few lines under that, we find the next quote of Chaitanya Chari Amrita in the connection with Tulasi Seva to Radharani. So Tulasi says, let me enjoy this sight for a moment. I gave him so much relish that time by showing you to him in, his, uh, in this beautiful way without dress and ornament. So Krishna linced and he had a few of Swamini. Blessed is this maidservant with this sublime service. They know exactly how to serve according to time, place and circumstances, bringing all these relishable memories to Bhava Maya's heart and making her swim in waves of rasa. Now comes the quote. Swamini is immersed in the bliss of Krishna consciousness when she hears Tulasi's Rasika descriptions. Priti Vishayananda Tat Ashrayananda Chaitanya Charit Amrita the pleasure of the object of love is the pleasure of the subject of love. Blessed is this kinkari. She serves exactly according to the requirement and the time. And now follows the relish of the Snana Seva. In this way, one service follows the other. So we heard about the worship of the lotus feet of Radharani, that this service is not like the service of the Supreme Lord. Then we asked, what is this then? Here it is said, Raganuga Bhakti is a mental religion. Then we hear about this mental religion, how Srila Raghunath had visions and how he is serving. And we hear some perfect examples right now here. So now it could be interesting to know what is the way to such mental steady service? How to get it? And here in verse number 22, Srila Anandadas Babaji is giving a wonderful description. And of course, with quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So 
So first we hear the subject. Now I will tell you my opinion about the path of spontaneous devotion. This is a quote from Brahma Bhakti Chandrika. These words are the essence of the popular and Vedic teachings. If you follow in the footsteps of the Sakis, you will attain a spiritual body in Braj. In this way, you will gratify your spiritual self. Nothing else but this can gratify the hearts of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. No one can attain perfection while being in bodily consciousness. Although Sri Sanatan Goswami was the crown jewel of scholars, he still humbly inquired from Sriman Mahaprabhu. Ke ami kena amaya jare tapatraya iha nahi jani ami ke mone hitahoi Satya sadhana tattva puchi tena jani kripa kori sap tattva kohoto apani. So this is the quote from Chaitanya Charit Amita, first quote. And it means, Who am I? Why am I suffering the threefold miseries? I do not know what is my own benefit. I ask you, what is the means and what is the goal? For I do not know. Please tell me all this truth yourself. So this is the inquirement from Sanatan Goswami. And Sriman Mahaprabhu gave the following very simple answer. Jivara Svarupoi Krishnera Nityadas Krishnera Tatashta Shakti Beda Abeda Prakash The constitutional position of the spirit soul is that it is the eternal servant of Krishna. It is Krishna's marginal potency and is both different and non-different from Krishna. Krishna Nitya Das Jiva Taha Bhuti Gelo Sorry, Krishna Nitya Das Jiva Taha Bhuli Gelo Se Doshe Maya Tara Golaya Bhandilo Tate Krishna Bhaje Kore Guru Ra Sevana Maya Jala Chute Paya Krishnera Charana The living entity is Krishna's eternal servant, but he has forgotten them. And for that fault, Maya has bound him around the neck. But when the soul worships Krishna and serves the Guru's feet, The network of Maya will break and he will attain Krishna's lotus feet. But the Gaudiya Vaishnavas do not 
have their aspirations fulfilled unless they worship Sri Radha and they attain Sri Radha's lotus feet. Sri Raghunath is burning in the fire of separation from Sri Radha only. He has no other shelter but Sri Radha's lotus feet. Pajami Radham Aravinda Netram Smara Miradha Madura Smitasyam Vada Miradha Karuna Paradra Tato Mamanyasti Katiyanakapi I worship lotus-eyed Radha. I remember the sweetly smiling face of Radha. And I speak of Radha, who is filled with compassion. In this way, there is no other shelter for me. So now we heard what is the way actually to come to such service and we also heard from where we begin. Sanatan Goswami in his big mercy has actually taken the role of a fallen jiva, although he is eternally perfect. Who am I? Why I am suffering the threefold miseries? Ad Atmika, Ad Bautika, Ad Daivika Klesha. Everyone is suffering under this Kleshas. I do not know my own benefit. I ask you what is the means and what is the goal, for I do not know. Please tell me all these truths yourself. So Sriman Mahaprabhu has answered Jivara Swarupoy Krishnera Nityadas Krishnera Tatashta Shakti Beda Abeda Prakash. But Ananda Das Babaji is making here the point. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas will never be satisfied with that until they worship Sri Radha and attain Sri Radha's lotus feet. And I thought maybe another quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita is fitting here very nicely. Nitya Sita Krishna Prema Satya Kabunoi Shravanadi Shuta Chitta Koroye Udoi. Love for Krishna is eternally perfect. It is not to be created or a new attainment. It arises in the heart which is purified by hearing and chanting. Krishna's glories. 
So if we just go on, because this is actually giving so much hope, it's eternally perfect. Love is eternally perfect. It's already there in our heart. So if we clean by the process of hearing, chanting, then it will arise again. And we will be not fulfilled unless we worship Radha and attain Sri Radha's lotus feet. So actually it's going in a circle. So whom we want to serve? The seva of Radharani is not like that of Krishna. And here we come to another quote. <coughs> so it's still in verse number 22. It's the third quote now from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Anandadas Babaji's quotes here, uh, his commentaries here. And he is writing, as a result of Sankitan, as a result, of Sankirtan. The joy of meditation increases and as a result of meditation the sweetness and the joy of Sankirtan increases. So it's lifting each other. In this way, the two invigorate each other and it is experienced as if they are not two separate activities, but only one. Although the door of Swamini's dressing room is closed, while she dressing, she still looks around restlessly, as if she thinks, Hmm, I understand. Mohan is watching me. Here comes the quote. Krishna mai Krishna yara antare bahire yaha yaha netra pode taha Krishna spure Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adilila 4 85 Krishna mai means that Krishna is inside and outside of her. Wherever she casts her glance, she sees Krishna. Remembering Krishna, Lachavati, Shai Radhika, shrinks out of shyness. Srila Das Goswami writes, Vastra Guptangim 
She covers her limbs with the silken garment of bashfulness. After this, Tulasi wants to pull the Odana, the whale, over Swamini's head. But just then, her hands remain empty. The vision has stopped. And Sri Raghunath does brace again to Swamini's lotus feet for devotional service. Another example for mental service. And in verse number 23, It comes more on the platform of Saraka, maybe more understandable. Wonderful examples given by Ananda Das Babaji. What means Manasa Seva? So we start. I serve Radha and Krishna in life or in death. I look at their playgrounds and their pastimes day and night. Wherever the adolescent couple performs their pastimes, I will be as a companion of the Sakis. When a devotee is fully absorbed in Smarana, it is as if he directly serves the divine couple. Smarana means mental association. A Brahmana from Pratishtanapura burned his finger after sticking it in an offering of hot sweet rice, Kshira, which he had just cooked in his meditation. So, he cooked in his meditation sweet rice, wanted to offer it, trying if it's hot and burned his finger, his real sadaka finger. <laughs> Sri Raghunathas Goswami got physically diagnosis indigestion from overeating in his meditation. Sri Krishna Das Babaji from Govardhan broke a bottle of oil in his meditation, perfume oil, and all of the other people that lived at Manasi Ganga could actually smell it. And the body and clothes of Srila Madhusudan Das Babaji of Suryakund were covered with colored powders after he had mentally played holy with Radha and Krishna. These examples show the miraculous transcendental power of devotion. If devotion is false, then what is real? Devotion is a portion of the Lord's innate energy, 
Swarup Shakti. Just as devotees have spiritual discussions with each other, Ishta Goshti, similarly, the Sadaka should also awaken his desire to have Ishta Goshtis with the Sakis and Mandaris. Similarly, the Sadaka should also awaken his desire to have Ishta Goshtis with the Sakis and Mandaris. Taku tadera sate posho tade kache mahatera vanira shakti ache. Stay with them. Sit with them. For the words of the great devotees have great power. The scriptures and the great saints say that when the devotee's devotion ripens, he can see his beloved deity in all the moving and non-moving creatures. Here comes the quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita Machalila 8. Mahabhagavate kesthavara changhama tahadhaha hoitara shri krishna spurana sthavara changhama deke na deke tara murti savatra hoinicha ishta deva spurti The pure devotees sees only shri krishna when he looks at the moving and non-moving entities. He sees the moving and non-moving beings, but he does not see their forms. Everywhere he perceives this beloved, uh, his beloved deity. Rade Rade Gauravani. Rade Rade Sunidididi. I was just, when you were reading, feeling that we are filling our ears, filling like drinking with the ears, and then as a result, and all the senses will be like covered with this hearing. The senses are filled up like a pond that is filled up and then the you know the rain of this kata or the rain of the realizations from the devotees when this is fulfilled and then the heart and the consciousness and the mind it's so um, satisfied that at one point it happens that everything we can hear and see and everything else becomes like uh, it is explained here we see only them it is like this fulfillment of the of the mind with all these topics and sometimes we are sitting here and we just listen and we think oh i am so empty I need to drink with my ears. I want to drink with my ears. But then again, other times come where we have already like a, a little mercy that we can feel and see Radha Mohan and Goranga and everything that we see with the senses. That's what I felt when you were reading. It's the fulfilling and then also when it is fulfilled and when it is constantly filled up then something is perceived in a different way. Yes, I think this is a very important point. It's like one step further 
and another step further. It's going upstairs. Sometimes we have some realizations and sometimes we have this deep thirst to hear more and more, to get to the next realizations, more deep, more deep, and again deeper. And it's like when we read these verses so often, I mean, we said this already so many times, but we have to say it again and again. When we read these verses, sometimes I, I really, I'm astonished. Was it written before there? I never realized it. Was it really written there? Or is it maybe another, uh, another book? Maybe a new form? <laughs> Did Anandadas Babaji really wrote this before or just now? <laughs> so the books, they seem to, to live. They seem to grow with us. Last time I had such a text, I, 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 I could really swear that it, it wasn't there before. It could not yes. be. How I could oversee that? So these books are really uh, interacting with us. They're speaking with us and lifting, up, lifting us up again and again. I think this is a wonderful point, actually, that uh, this is how we grow step by step through the mercy, the mercy of such pure souls. And even if we don't want, I mean, I can just talk from myself. Sometimes I'm really like a opposition. I don't want. Leave me alone. But still the mercy is coming and dragging you more, a little bit more. Come on, just a bit. And the only thing we have to do is just go on chanting, reading, hearing, drinking the nectar through the ears again and again and the heart gets more and more cleaned because as we heard Nitya Sita Krishna Brahma it's already there it's perfect the love is always there it's perfect Guravani Bhaiya if, if I can just um, share with you this what you were just mentioning about the um, the writings, the commentaries of these beautiful um, verses by Antadas Babaji, I feel very similar, like, I just remember. Something happened, I cannot hear you now. Can you hear? Yeah, now we can hear you again. I just remembered one time Gurudev was visiting Nantadas Babaji in Radhakun and Gurudev was praising the books Baba had written. And then Baba looked at Gurudev like a small child and said, I actually don't know who wrote these commentaries. I really don't know. I'm myself astonished when I read it and I think, oh, did I write this? And then he told to Gurudev, actually, Swamini is writing through me. Like, I'm just holding the pen and she's dictating it. So I felt that every time we read a verse together or we're listening, and the similar feeling comes that I've never heard this before. Like, how is it possible that this paragraph never entered me? And I felt it's like you said, it's, it's a living text. It's full of bhav. So the more our bhav increases, the more these uh, books respond to it, you know. When our bhav is very small, we might only see small, you know, we don't see everything, but the more our bhav grows by the mercy of Gurudev, 
and the Mahajans, the more it's revealed in this book, you know, like the more the 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 juice comes out, the nectar, and the more we relish, you know. So it's just a, uh, you know, I always say that we're not reading, we're feeling this text, you know, with together with Gurudev. He makes us feel it, you know. That's why he always says, read slowly, read very, you know, word by word, because it's full imbued with the bhav of the Kinkari's love for Swamini. So thank you, Sunit and uh, Goravani, for highlighting this to us, rather. Thank you, Gopinath. Thank you so much. Such a wonderful description again. <laughs> yes, and I also want to share one thing that sometimes it is that I feel a very empty or most of the time because I feel that I cannot keep it. I have so many holes, no, whatever. My heart is uh, not such a good container. I am um, making so many mistakes. The, you know, some things is going on in my mind. That's why I think I cannot remember. I cannot, you know, I always uh, have this... Um, Come again coming back and back to me that I feel some emptiness it wants to be fulfilled so I'm wandering around I want to have more 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 and then I feel empty but this morning when I went to my garden I look at the leaf of a rose you know in the early morning they have these drops of dew and then I saw it looks so beautiful. There's this rose leaf, you know, it looks a little bit like a heart shape. And then there's these drops of dew, and they are just at the tip of the, of the you know, different, different uh, le uh, leaves, a little bit rim, you know, at the side. And it looks so beautiful. And I, I, my mind immediately, it says, look, this is how it must look when Shimati is perspiring, you know, and the, from her skin, these beautiful drops come and they look so soft and so tender and they are so glittering. And then I think to myself, wow, even that I can remember this, just looking at this is must be some mercy coming to me because why can I uh, feel it? Why can I see it? It's not my doing. Then Swamini is coming, you know, some mercy is coming. Look, you can see me everywhere if you if you can see me, if you can feel me. And that uh, I just, why I share this, um, because I feel that at one moment I feel empty, but in another moment it can change quickly because mercy is coming and you don't know at which corner of the day, of the moment, of the, you know, any situation, the mercy can flow again. And that is so amazing. And that's why I believe 100% what also Gopinath said, this listening means feeling. And these feelings, sometimes they feel like maybe they are lost or maybe not so, so strong or so. It's like my daily activities. But in one second, some mercy can come. And I feel, wow, Swamini is giving hints. Gurudev is giving hints. Look at this beauty. This is how it looks when she is uh, crying or perspiring. So I, I, I thought, oh, it's amazing that something is coming again, even though I feel empty. In general, I feel empty. It's like keeping our container ready, you know, like Guruda says. Obviously, we never know when the mercy will hit us. And I think this is something, Suniti, which all of us maybe experienced it sometimes feel so empty like almost depressed you know like feeling, oh, nothing is happening <laughs> you know like, why is it not happening you know but then in a minute you know it can change again and feelings can come and so it's like waves no gurudev on kesha baba also say like it's always waves you know we have to always take the wave gurudev said when the wave is high then ride it because it will bring you to the next you know and if you don't have a wave, then take Gurudev's wave, ride his wave. <laughs> yeah. He's always on a wave, you know. So, you know, we have, like, our, if we are on the low, then we take our Gurudev's wave. 
So thank you, Suniti. It's very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> you are really philosophic. This is really huh, wonderful. Actually, I was just thinking, this is also our Vilap. We think we are empty. Yes, we have to think that we are empty. How we could not think that we are empty? If we not think that we are empty, if we don't ride on this wave and we don't feel empty, then we didn't, we are not on the way, isn't it? We have to have also our Vilap. As soon as we come back in, in, in bodily consciousness, we should cry immediately and not think oh yes now let us have a nice coffee now let us have a nice meeting with our friends now let us you know go in here and there and then it's not okay if we feel good something is wrong we have to have this will up we have to feel empty if we cannot see cannot serve then we have to be in this in this uh, state of mind that we we didn't reach anything, we are lost. And then pray again, pray intense. I think this is the the biggest problem that we we don't start immediately to pray again. We think, oh yeah, not so bad circumstances. <laughs> But Srila Raghunadas is always in very bad circumstances. As soon as he is not in a direct seva, as soon as he is out of his vision, immediately he laments. Immediately. Not a second that he is satisfied in his bodily uh, condition. Even though in his bodily situation. He is most conscious. He is only thinking about his seva. He is completely in Radhadasyam. But still he is lamenting immediately. So it should be normal that we actually don't feel good. At least a little will up. <laughs> so the next quote is in verse number 24 of Sri Vilapa Another vision, another example of this seva actually. In his spiritual identity as Tulasi, Sri Raghunath sits down close to Srimati. He lovingly holds, or she lovingly holds, her chin with her left hand and the brush in her right hand. and starts to make full moon shaped tilak of musk on her golden forehead. First, she draws a circle of aguru mixed with musk. Within that circle, she draws a beautiful, fine lotus with lines of Sindura. And in that fine lotus, she makes a tilak dot with sandalwood pulp mixed with camphor. 
this sweet tilak that shimmers on Swamini's sweet forehead is known as the Kama Yantra or Cupid's instrument. It is able to control Shyam Sundara and gives him the greatest bliss. It reminds Swamini of Shyam because it has the same color and fragrance as his. While Tulasi relishes all this beauty, she called Swamini Devi. How many meanings are hidden in this single word, Devi? Now comes the quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila 4. Devi Kohi Jyotamana Parama Sundari Kimba Krishna Krida Puchara Vasati Nagari Devi means the most effulgent and most beautiful girl or the girl who lives in the town of Krishna's worship. Again, Devi means the most effulgent and most beautiful girl or the girl who lives in the town of Krishna's worship. She is the most beautiful because her Madan Mahabhav, which is not a material kind of beauty, Rasika Shekha Krishna can not appreciate mere surface beauty, which is not arising from pure love for him. He does not accept any bliss which does not come forth from his pleasure potency. He does not accept any bliss which does not come forth from his pleasure potency. So without Radha, no bliss for Krishna. He does not accept without coming from her. I think this makes it very clear. You cannot serve Krishna without Radha. No way. You cannot give him any pleasure. Only the flavor of pure love is dear to him. The word Devi also means Divyati Kridati Ashyam. She who plays with Krishna, satisfying him with her worship, 
because Krishna plays in Radha, she is called Devi. He plays in other beloveds also, of course, but Sri Radha is the fountain head of all of them. Hence, she is the empress of the town of Krishna's worship. The word puja means establishing gratification. Sri Radharani is the endless storehouse of things that can gratify Sri Krishna. She can madden him with desires that he could not even have imagined himself. She is Krishnendriya Vishrama Vidhu Shalika, the resting place for all of Krishna's senses. There is no other such a playground for Krishna anywhere. How many pastimes Tulasi reminds Radhika of while she calls her Devi and paints the tilak on her forehead. So what a wonderful example of this Manasi Seva. This tilak is also described so lovely, so fine, every detail. And this is another mercy for us so that we can go into that and dive into that meditation. It's not just a tilak. <laughs> it's the Kama Yantra. It is able to control Shyam Sundara. and give him the greatest bliss. So the next quote is in Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali, verse number 25. It's a quote again from Adi Lila 4. And it's about Shringara. So first we start with the theme. The Nayaka, the hero, is Shringara Ras, 
personify. The Naika is Mahabhav personified. And the bodies of the maid servants are made of Seva Rasa, the flavor of devotional service. The verbal root diff means play. You should play in such a way that the line of Sindura that I made on your part will be spoiled. There are three kinds of Shringara blade. First, one in which Krishna leads and Swamini assists. Second, one in which Swamini leads and Krishna assists. And the third, one in which both are leading. Rasa itself will decorate you. May I see this after your pastimes? Swamini becomes overwhelmed when she hears the moving words of the maidservant. How can Swamini be decorated by Rasa? By her crushed flower garland, her half-opened braid, her broken necklaces, her loosened dress and ornaments, her inwardly exhausted blooming and rolling eyes and her externally softly crying yet sweetly smiling face? Sri Krishna himself, who is transcendental blissful flavor personified. Rasanam, Rasatamaha. He is the greatest flavor of all flavors. And who the devotees want to experience in the innermost core of their hearts loses himself in beholding that beauty. So to underline this wonderful statement here, there is given another quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila 4. 256. A loving poet has written about Krishna's experiences. Lila ante suke ihara ye anga madhuri, tahade ki suke ami apana pasari. After our blissful pastimes, I forget myself in happiness. Can there be any doubt that the devotees 
who are surrendered to Sri Radha and who are absorbed in Mandri bath are floating endlessly on the waves of Rasa. The lives of such devotees are terrifically pervaded by the highest experience of Rasa. This is proven by the books written by the sensitive Rasika saints. <laughs> How it's with you? I, I, I feel that if we go from that side, from Chaitanya Charit Amrita, into the theme of Sri Sri Vilab Kuzumanjali, it is even more sweet. So many points, like you put something sweet and dive it into liquid sugar. Yeah. That uh, this idea, what we get from this verse or this feeling, that yeah. first Radharani plays in Krishna, Krishna plays in Radharani because they are always playing in each other's hearts, in each other's feelings, in each other's dreams. And then this last verse, what you write, uh, what you speak, uh, Lila ante suke ihar ye ange maduri that the mandaris they are also they are completely you know also in that flow of their place in each other and that is so sweet because then it becomes the the half and you know the twelve and the twelve and the half they belong eternally together they are never separated. They are enhancing each other. They are also playing in that rasa. And that is so, so sweet. Uh, even to just hear it, it fills my heart with so much uh, joy because that is the service also of the mandaris, that they are floating in that because they are feeling it and they are also producing it. They are part of it. It's not only that they are observing it, but they are part of it by uh, enhancing it and by reflecting it to Swamini, like in the mirror of her heart, they are reflecting the pastimes and by speaking these beautiful names to her, like Devi and reminding her. So I, I uh, feel very much um, enlivened by your sharing today that uh, this highest experience of rasa is uh, you know it is in the books and like gurdiv always says the books are the mercy they are the creeper sadhya this is the goal that to get the mercy of the books is to get the mercy of this rasika vaishnavas who are the maid servants who, who are sharing their feelings here and not only sharing their feelings because their feelings they only, um, how do you say that? Their feelings are Radharani's feelings. And Radharani's feelings are Krishna's feelings. So it's like a mystical, interconnected, um, divine play that is never ending. And that is making, you know, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, that is what the nectar that we have always been waiting and always been anxious for. 
the never ending nectar of feelings that are flowing and flowing and flowing and increasing and increasing and increasing. So thank you for sharing this. Thank you. Thank you, Sunidi Didi. You made chocolate around the sugar. <laughs> Make it again sweeter. And you reminded me that actually yesterday we were reading in the evening sharing a verse number 54 of Radha Rasa Sudanidi and there was one sentence I just remembered because of your sweet sharing. When the hairs got entangled, she immediately enters the grove to disentangle them. We know that scene. And now comes the line. The playful couple seeing her think she is the very form of their playful ecstasy. Isn't that amazing? The playful couple seeing her, they think she's the very form of their playful ecstasy. So the half is the full form of the ecstasy of both of them. Also, just the half, completely full of two kinds of ecstasies in form. And in this moment we can understand this is a bhava there. It's made of bhava. It's made of ecstasy. And the couple sees her like that. She is the very form of their ecstasy, of their playful ecstasy. She is the form. Wow! So they do not feel shy before her at all. So it's so natural that the kinkari is there with them. It's so natural. Because the kinkari is made of their ecstasy. Sevarasa. And this means the half is even more full than the full. just more filled up. Stays the half, of course, but even more filled up. Double filled. <laughs> I found this is an amazing line. And this is also one of these examples why I thought, was it there written before? Yes, in Prima Bhakti Chandrika Baba is giving this word, Avesha Murti. The absorption that has become alive. Sometimes it's like an overdose of sweetness. It's 
So let us dive in more. <laughs> because overdose always means we need more. It's not like in the material life, isn't it? Overdose means you stop. No, overdose means you need more. Another statement, another quote of Chaitanya Charitamrita is in the verse number 27 of Sri Sri Vilap Kusumanjali. So it's a verse, I will read it to get the connection, because it's in the beginning. Ovaroru, nicely tight girl, your excellent earrings are like ropes that the flower archer Cupid has placed to bind the mad elephant king of the prince of Braja's heart. Can this happy girl hang these ornaments on your ears? Notes Sri Raghunadas, who suffers separation from his beloved deity, experiences the gradual service of the embodiment of Mahabhav. After Tilak and Tringara, he puts on her earrings in this verse. It is the nature of Mahabhav to make Krishna happy by playing with him. Only Mahabhav contains all the ingredients to awaken Vrajaraj Nandana Krishna's desires for Sringararas and to fulfill these desires as well. Now comes the quote. Se Mahabhav Chintamani Sara Krishna Vancha Purna Kore E Karya Yara Chaitanya Charit Amrita This Mahabhav is the quint essence of the Chintamani jewel of love whose only duty is to fulfill Krishna's desires. This Mahabhav is the quint essence of the Chintamini jewel of love, whose only duty is to fulfill Krishna's desires. Therefore, this Rasika Kinkari immerses Mahabhava Mai in an ocean of bliss by speaking ever so sweet Krishna Kata to her. Do you know what Raj Raj Nanda, Nanda Nandana's heart is like? Like the maddened king of elephants. A relishable thing can be understood in two ways. In the Tatwa way or in the Rasa way. The way of truth and the way of flavor. Take a rasa gula. 
to know how the rasagula is made and what ingredients are required to make it is the tattva way of understanding it. And to place it on the tengu and actually taste it is the rasa way of understanding. Without, Without placing the rasa gula on the tengu, its taste cannot be known and relished. In the same way, God is our relishable object. So this was quote in verse number 27. I like this example, Gauravani. This rasa in tattva, how to relish and how to produce the relish. Because if we don't know how to make a rasa gula, I mean, it's, it's a material example. But if I don't know how to cook and to bake, then nobody's tongue can relish it. So it's also gives me some satisfaction to hear it because that production of the rasa gula is also important of course the relish is the higher taste but if i i want to make somebody happy then i need to know how to make a rasa gula <laughs> so that their tongue can relish Yes. Yesterday we also spoke about this, uh, uh, wie sagt man, Philosophie und Geschmack. Po ja, Poesie, genau. Poetry, it's called in English, huh? poetry. About poetry. If you want to have, if you want to know something, you don't need any poetry. But if you want to feel something, you have to use poetry. Otherwise, it's not possible to get the feeling transported just by knowledge. Like you will say, A and B meet and then there's C. Yeah. Krishna and Radha come together and then there's C, there's the Manjari. This may be information, but this is not relishable. <laughs> so you need to use poetry to describe what is happening, to, to get the feelings transported, actually. And we are so happy that we have this poetic literature here, because true the use of this poetry, of these great souls, we get actually transported the feelings of them in our heart. This is the way we drink it. We drink the poetry of these great souls, actually. And by this way, it's filling up our heart. So one way is the information and to taste it, you need to eat it or drink it through poetry. So 
So the next quote I found is in the verse number 31 of Shri Shri Vilap Kusumanjali. And it's about the ripeness of bhajan. We have heard there are only two states of bhajan, ripe or unripe. So Srila Narottam Das Thakur sings, it begins with a quote from Prema Bhakti Chandrika. Pakile se Prema Bhakti apake sadhanariti pakati lakshana tattvasara. When bhajan is ripe, it is called Prema Bhakti. And when it is unripe, it is called sadhana. This is the essential definition of devotion. How wonderfully Srila Raguna Das Goswami was fixed in his bhajan. He was always floating in an ocean of uninterrupted meditation on the Rasika pastimes of the Yugala Kishore. Raguna Tera Niyamayeno Pashanera Reka. This is the quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Raghunath's discipline was like a line carved in a stone. <laughs> a wonderful example. A line carved in a stone. You will not bring it out again. It's there inside. It's carved in a stone. That's a line. It's not movable. There will come another quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. While she makes Swamini's, while she makes Swamini dive in the ocean of Shyamarasa, Tulasi puts the jeweled ankle belts on, and calling her Sonetre, beautiful eyed girl seeing the wonderful blooming beauty of her eyes. The eye that sees Krishna in a sunayana uh, is a sunayana, a good eye. An eye that sees Krishna is a sunayana, a good eye. But the gopis will never call the eye that does not see Krishna a beautiful eye. Rather, they will curse such an eye. Vankshi Ganamrita Dhamma Lavanyamrita Janmastana Yenadeke Se Chandavadana Senayane Kiba Kaja Putu Taramate Baj Senarayan Raheki Karana Chaitanya Chavit Amita Matya Lila 2 29 Krishna's moonlike face is the abode of his nectarian flute song and the birthplace of natural nectarian beauty. What is the use of that eye that does not see him? Let a thunderbolt fall on it. 
The gopis cannot imagine that there can be any other use of the eye than seeing Krishna. Therefore, they say in Srimad Bhagavatam, we do not know of any other fruit for the eyes. I think this is a point which, when a mandri is serving, she understands that the highest taste for the eye of Radharani is Krishna. That's why she is serving in that way. She is giving blue uh, angles, for example, blue sari, a blue cover when Swamini is lying on the bed to sleep a little bit. And she's preparing a bed of flowers like in the Kunj. And you may ask, but Swamini is at home. Krishna will not come. Why prepare such a bed? Because Swamini will dream of him. Swamini will play with him in dreams. Therefore, it needs that bed. So, Mantra will always serve that fact that for Swamini, there is nothing more beautiful to see than her beloved. Her eye will enjoy when Radharani's eyes are blooming up. And this is nicely written here. She's calling her Sunetra, beautiful eyed girl, seeing the wonderful blooming beauty of her eyes. Swamini's eyes are blooming up when she sees blue. She's saying, O Sunetre, your very beautiful eyes attract even Sri Krishna. Although he himself can attract everyone's heart to Lassi serve Swamini by crystallizing Shyam before her with her Rasika descriptions. Then Tulasi puts sweetly jinging two rings on Srimati's lovely twos, calling them Breshta, dearly beloved, and thinking Ah, how fortunate are these two rings. What if I could always stay on Swamini's feet, on her sweet lotus feet, like that? Who would not feel fulfilled by always staying on this lotus feet?
So sometimes devotees asked, but does the manjari think about or meditate about Krishna? We can see here, yes, in a very special way for her Swamini, how to crystallize her beloved before her wonderful blue eyes in this way and only in that way to give her Swamini pleasure. And this is actually what we were talking about, Suniti, isn't it? About the chanting of the Kam Gayatri. Do you remember? Can you maybe... Last, last yes. Monday, you mean? Last uh, Chaitanya Chaitamita. Mm -hmm. Can you remind us on the essence which you understood because I didn't understand anything? <laughs> it's like an ongoing subject. It, <laughs> I feel um, this mercy is coming to us that Radhika wants us to really feel what is what is this Rama Rama Hare Hare <laughs> so that um, there is some yeah if I want to do service I need to know what is the, the, the goal of my service who do I serve and how and when and this Kamagayatri is the moment of our service Of course, first of all, the mantras, they also, they arrange the meeting, they try to uh, overcome the obstacles, they help in any situation. They always protect Swamini and they are protected by Swamini and they give uh, hints and they, in any situation of their service during the da day, they have the they have this uh, in their minds, like just like also Swamini. She only, uh, when she is separated uh, from him, she wants to be together. And when she is together, she already feels that she is separated again because her love is so great. Her love is so overwhelming, even for Shyam, overwhelming. And how to connect uh, for us as sadhakas and to come into that service into in the right mood as a, as a servant of as a Dasi of Shrimati Radhika, that secret is especially uh, that mercy, let's say the mercy, is especially in that Kama Gayatri mantra. And when, when we are chanting this mantra, it's not only the syllables. The syllables are just expressions of, of what, what is the rasa in that moment. What are they exchanging? What are their feelings? What do they need? All this is in calm, uh, calm Gayatri. Because here we are all together. It's the Radha, Mohan and the Manjris. And Gurudev is giving us the mercy that he is again and again explaining to us from all different, different angles. Like you remember Sundaram? In Wednesday sharing, it was about that story from uh, Gaudiya Math background reading. You were reading from Narayan Maharaj's book about Kam Gayatri, about Vishwana Chakravata Thakur. He has the doubts. Well, where, what is this half syllable? 
But actually, it's all coming from the same source. Because why I feel it is Radharani's mercy that we can get some feelings for these mantras, that we get some visions, some feelings, some, you know, some touching of my heart when I do remember that mantra and when I do my mantras. And it's, it's uh, always, this is all the mercy of Shrimati Radhika. So Gurudev also says there's no difference. You can look at one story, like from Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur's prayers. He wants to commit suicide. He wants to understand. But this is actually all mercy for us. So we can understand the importance of this mantra. And in this mantra are 20 and a half syllables. 12 represent Krishna and 12 represent Srimati Radhika. And the half syllable represents the mantras. But actually, Gurudev says, the what i what i remember and please all you you have to help me because really my i am also very empty as i have revealed to you <laughs> from the emptiness <laughs> there is something coming by mercy of gurudev but uh, you know to feel this mantra from the perspective of the mantri is always the focus on shrimati radhika because the mantras always look for Shrimati Radhika service for her needs and you know that is the focus of the mantras that is our love because we love her we are the most in love with Shrimati Radhika and because of that the half is a very very important also because uh, Swamini will give us also services in that time when they are together the mantras are not at all shy because they have this oneness, they feel so much closeness with Swamini. Whenever her hair is uh, entangled with the earrings, they come and they get uh, the service that they will, you know, get the hairs undone so that there is no disruptions in their meetings, in their love exchanges. So that all is the meaning of karma gayatri. And because we are in the mood in the service of Shrimati Radhika, we feel it from her side. We we never think, oh, um, what's in there for me with Krishna? No, that is the sucky bath. This is the meeting, uh, the 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 mood of other other gopis. But we are the the mandaris aspirants, and we uh, we feel it from this uh, view, from that feeling of Shrimati Radhika. What does she need? And that is the secret of chanting. The Gama Gayatri, and we listen what we have listened today also from Yugo Ravani, from Chaitanya Chaitamrita, always with the feelings from the perspective of a Dasi, of a small servant of Srimati Radhika. And at the same time, everything is revealed. So sometimes it is revealed, sometimes it is covered, but that is also mercy, and we are just like the small. You know, crying chakora birds waiting for a drop. I have no so many realizations. But uh, where's Gopinath? He has more realizations. Are you still there, Gopinath? Uh, I think also time is over. So yes, maybe they will not come back. So yes, it was on very an wonderful day. explanation. But you, have to, you have to go, Ravani. You have to fulfill the cup. Because mine is empty. We are the mandaries, my friends. <laughs> and we keep on serving all the time. Until the Only end. Only the lotus feet of Radha. <laughs> we keep on serving. Because we are the Manjuris and we will serve only Radha. Jai Shri Radhe. So nice. Thank you, Gauravani. My God, it was a big infusion. <laughs>